G'day, welcome to Down on the Woodworks. In today's video, I've got another furniture upcycle or remodeling project. This time it's a coffee table and it's gonna get a pretty significant facelift. This is the coffee table that's getting the treatment. As you can see, it's old and dated. And there's also a matching hall table that's gonna get a similar facelift. Both pieces are going to be brought back to their natural colour, but the coffee table is going to get a few more major changes. Those four lighter coloured inserts are going to be removed, the cross piece is going to remain, and they're going to be replaced with uh, glass panels. That hole there did have a full length drawer which went uh, through to both sides, that's it there. Uh, that's not going to be used anymore. All these side panels, they're going to be removed as well. So you just have the top four legs and somewhere along the bottom here i'm not very good at pointing with my finger somewhere along here we're just going to put in a shelf so you can put uh, books and magazines and stuff first thing though is to start pulling this apart that's going to be the fun part The first thing to do was to remove the old colour and all the rustic look of those saw marks to give the table a more contemporary look. This was easily done with the jointer to flatten two adjacent faces 90 degrees to each other. and then with a thickness planer to clean up and flatten the remaining two faces. Now that's a huge difference already. It was essential to use the original timber from the table for this remodel so that it all matched. With the side panels removed, I needed to make some aprons to tie the top of the legs together and have something to fix the top to. On the wider panels, the only pieces long enough to fit between the legs were the top and bottom strips, but on their own, they weren't wide enough for an apron piece, so I decided to edge glue the two together. So again, using the jointer, I cleaned up the surfaces and edge glued them together to make two wider lengths. I was pretty happy with how the colour and grain match turned out on these pieces. The side panels were big enough to cut the aprons out of in one piece. If you remember back to when I dismantled the table, it wasn't built with mortise and tenon joints, so these apron pieces are only just long enough to fit between the legs without any extra length for integral tenons to be cut. But I wanted to use mortise and tenon joints, so the only alternative was to use floating tenons or loose tenons. To cut the mortises, I drilled out most of the material first and then finished them with a straight bit in the router. For the end grain mortises on the aprons, I clamped them to the side of my bench 
with one of the table legs to give plenty of support and stability to the router. The mortises and the legs were first drilled out on the bench drill and then finished on the router table. I used some pencil marks on the router table fence to cut the mortises to the right length and position. I also used the same timber to make the loose tenons. The tenons were 10mm thick and about 50mm long. Next part to make was the shelf so that the base could be assembled. Again I used timber from the table and cut out about 12 or 13 lengths to make the slats for the shelf. These were cleaned up and dimensioned using the thickness planer to a final dimension of about 20 by 20 mil. Unfortunately, to make the side rails of the shelf, I didn't have any more leftover timber that was long enough, so I had to glue together smaller lengths. The shelf had to be made from the same timber as the table, and unfortunately the longest length I had was about uh, 6 160 millimeters, but I needed to make up 1200 millimeters. So, what I've done here, as you can see, I've joined two pieces end to end, and I thought to myself, how am I going to reinforce or strengthen that? So, the only option was to actually laminate two pieces together. So, eventually, these extra pieces here will be glued into there on this face and also on this face. I've got these in the clamps together, but they're not actually glued in the center. These are two separate rails and yeah, they're finished. When they're finished, they'll be double laminated about 40 mil by 40 mil. Once the side rails were dry, I cleaned up all the glue squeeze out with the jointer and thicknesser. I then needed to cut a channel in the side rails to house the ends of the slats, so I made several cuts with the table saw and then finished them with a spiral bit in the router table.
The slats were fixed in place with some glue and brad nails just to keep them spaced apart. The channels in the side rails provided all the weight support they needed. Before deciding how I was going to attach these side rails to the legs, I wanted to cut that groove in to see what I had left on this end profile. And looking at it now, I think the best thing to do will be just go with double dowels in this piece here. And uh, these end pieces here just need to be trimmed down to final length. To drill the dowel holes in the ends of these rails and to get those holes straight and um, correctly spaced, I just made this real simple uh, drilling guide. The top of the guide has this big block of hardwood with the two holes drilled in it. That's so that the um, holes don't loosen up too quickly. Drilled them on the drill press so I know that they're parallel and they're straight and the spacing is what I wanted for this end profile here. And then just a couple of pieces to guide it onto this so that um, it basically locks in place and doesn't move. And just use a clamp to hold it in place and that's basically it. And when I'm done using it like this for these end rails, I can take this block off. Uh, it's just screwed on there, there's no glue, and use that block to drill the dowel holes in the coffee table legs. So that way they line up perfectly, hopefully. Once I drilled the dowel holes in the shelf, I used an off cut of the shelf rail to space out a strip of timber and then fixed it to the block. This was to position the block correctly on the leg so the inside of the shelf rail would end up flush with the face of the leg. Whenever I use off-the-shelf dowel for dowel joints, I like to rough up the surface by rolling them with a rasp to give the glue a better surface to stick to. Then it was time to get on with the final assembly of the base. First, I glued up the two side assemblies separately because it was just easier for me to do it that way. This is the glue up of the side assemblies. There's the two legs and the side apron glued up and I have the shelf sitting in place in a dry fit. It's sitting on dowels here to keep the legs at the exact spacing while the apron and legs set. And with that shelf in place, the apron and legs are perfectly square. With the two ends done, it was time to glue the rest of the frame together, which included the long aprons and the shelf. And that meant lining up the tenons and the dowels at the same time but it all went together without a hitch. I used ratchet straps to hold it all together because I don't have clamps that big. And I added the gluing squares into the corners. And that was the base assembly done.
Well, I'm sure you'll agree the table looks quite different from the original. And the changes that I'm going to make to the top are really going to be the icing on the cake. I decided to split the project up into two videos because when I went back through all of my footage that I had for it, there was just an enormous amount of videos and I didn't realise there was so much, I suppose, detail or work involved in this project. And yeah, this video is already about 15 minutes, so I thought I'll split it up into two. And part two will be finishing it off with the top. So in saying that, I hope you really enjoyed the first part and uh, looking forward to the second part to see the table get finished off. That gives me the perfect opportunity to say, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so, so you don't miss out on that uh, next video and all of my other videos that are coming up. Also make sure you hit that notification bell so that you get notified when that's up. If you wanna see what I'm up to uh, in between videos, you can follow me on Instagram. But uh, for the time being, you guys all have a great day.